Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Watches and Whiskey event that was put on by Watch You Want in Miami and that was this past Wednesday night. That's coming up right after this. Hey guys, I'm here with OJ, founder of What You Want. What made you start What You Want? Oh gosh, you know, I love watches. And more than loving watches, I love a great deal. Truly, I enjoy something knowing that I got a really good deal. And so part of my drive in starting What You Want was, you know, being able to buy watches at great prices and being able to offer them at great, great prices to our customers. They ask us what the symbolism of the red rooster is. So the red rooster represents nature's timekeeper. What we have seen is if you actually look in um, uh, literature, the rooster is a global symbol of hospitality and good fortune. The tradition is when someone moves into a new home, you give them something for the kitchen with a rooster on it as a symbol of prosperity and good fortune. Good fortune. Yes. That's fantastic. Thank you for yeah. that. So what, what was the motivation to put on this, this particular event for watch lovers to encourage the trading? We present this program as really more so of a get together for watch enthusiasts. An opportunity to talk watch and sort of geek out on watches. You know, so many times you walk into stores, you can see the most amazing watches in the world. But typically in a retail environment, it can be sort of a benign, sterile experience. You know, you got a salesperson with his arm crossed. You know, and the only question is, do you want to buy this? We're really trying to create more of a test drive environment and really more of a connection. We want to be able to educate people as to what the real nuances behind that watch are. And you know, one of our greatest frustrations is we've got Tim who does an amazing job of bringing our watches to life. And we have the best photography of real watches and all the details and the finishing and everything else. But really, at the end of the day, you know, you're looking at a 10 by 12 screen, it really just doesn't do justice to the watches for real watch enthusiasts. So really the whole motivation of this kind of event is to just surround ourselves around watch enthusiasts so that we can all share our passion. We can all share the watches that we're wearing, talk about the stories because you know a watch is not just an object. It's got so much energy attached to it. It's got so much passion and raw emotion attached to it. It has a heartbeat. It's got a heartbeat. It's got, it's, like I said, it's got an energy and almost like a karma to it, if you will. have an impressive inventory sure. of watches so how do you build that inventory are there people that are coming to consign pieces to you or how do you go about tracking down such an impressive so amount that's a great question so you know what drives our business more than anything else is this ever-changing eclectic selection of watches from the most mainstream as well as the most off the beaten track brands that you can think of and so we're looking for watches that have a story we're looking for watches that have a DNA and that have the nuances that really make people think, wow, there's really something interesting about that. So we really try to focus on bringing in interesting watches and again, being able to offer them on a value basis. We acquire our watches by either buying them outright from our customers, by taking them in trade as partial or full payment towards other watches that we're selling. And then we also have a very active consignment program where we're essentially your broker to sell your watch. And I use the word broker because we truly treat each of our watches as almost like a piece of real estate. 
from the perspective of how can we do everything we can to glorify this watch, to maximize the value of this watch to an end consumer who's going to put this watch on their wrist. To that end, we really don't do very much business with watch dealers. We want to find the end consumer because nothing makes us happier than selling a watch to someone who's going to put it on their wrist and enjoy it and be able to tell the story about how they got their new watch. One of the things we pride ourselves on is that we cater to the watch enthusiast. And the watches that we sell to them then become the watches we buy back or take in trade. So we kind of have a familiarity with a, a large percentage of the watches that we're selling because we've already bought and sold them in some cases three, four, and five times. We want to be able to inject new inventory on a daily basis. taking so much of your time. You've been so gracious to speak with me. One more question just for fun. Sure. Was the limited edition Omega Spectre that you had the fastest selling watch that you can remember? You know, sometimes the fastest selling watch is the watch we mispriced and don't have a chance to fix it. <laughs> we know that when there's five guys all consecutively telling us they'll take that watch, we know we mispriced it. But you know what? Sometimes that's great advertising and great PR too. Making sure that buying and selling watches is a happy joyful experience because that's what it's supposed to be. If the store is anything like the event, it's been incredibly welcoming. Well, you're certainly welcome and to come it is fantastic. and check us out anytime you like. We're in Emerald Hills and you can call us to set up a private appointment to view any of the watches we have in stock or just to come by and tour our facilities and we'd love to have you anytime. I think I will do that. Thank you so much, OJ. I truly appreciate your time. And I Hey guys, this is Michael. He's here at the Watch You Want event. And what are you wearing, Michael? I'm wearing a GG La Coutre. All right, let's take a look. How long have you had it? Uh, probably about five years. How many watches do you have? That's a good question. Uh, probably six or eight that are worth mentioning. What's your favorite? Either this one or my IWC. My IWC, I get a ton of comments on. All right, so you guys won't believe what I found here. I found the Tag Heuer infamous smartwatch, and we're here with Josh. So what made you buy this watch? I wanted a, a smartwatch that looked like a watch, basically. And I would never wear an Apple watch because it looks like a piece of technology. I wanted something that looked like a piece of horology. Now, do you plan on trading it in to get the automatic version in two years, the limited edition automatic in two years? You know, it it um, it helped me to buy the watch because I figured like there was a safety valve if I didn't like it. It's a small crowd, and a guy comes up to me as I'm helping myself to the hors d'oeuvres. Granted, FP Jorn is ten feet away. He's taking questions. It's a small group. Guy comes up to me while I'm eating and he says, that's the voice that serenades me to sleep every night. Oh, I could listen to your mellifluous tones waxing lyrical about high horology until the end of time. And I'm like... So that wasn't awkward at all? It's not the most awkward moment I've had. I once had a guy tell me that him and his girlfriend were watching the, the videos the night before and that's where I cut him off. So if you guys haven't figured it out by now, that is Tim, the famous voice of What You Want, and those are the award-winning hands that we all stare at as we oogle the watches that he shows us. <laughs> and let's see this beautiful reversal that he's wearing. Show us the beautiful, there we go. Reverso Platinum number two. That's one of mine. Not Absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, you'll never guess who I ran into again. I think he's following me. Say hi to Dalton. Hey everybody. I'm wearing my uh, white face Daytona. I got it two days ago. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Watch You Want event. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That's it for this one. CG out.